In this video, I'm going to teach you about Lermite's phenomenon, an unusual pain syndrome oftentimes associated with multiple sclerosis. Lermite's phenomenon hurts. I'll explain common presentations of Lermite's phenomenon, the underlying causes of the condition, or why we frequently see it in the setting of multiple sclerosis, and if you stick around to the end, how we treat Lermite's phenomenon. All of that, and it starts right now. Howdy, learn about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this channel to help my own clinic patients learn between visits. I use easy to understand language to provide accurate and approachable multiple sclerosis education. If you're impacted by MS and you wanna up your game, make sure to subscribe to the channel right now. In this video, I'll be discussing yet another unique multiple sclerosis pain syndrome, this time Lermite's phenomenon. Lermite is a dead French guy and they named this particular finding after him. Lermite's phenomenon, or sometimes called Lermite's sign, is a very specific uh, experience which is wholly unpleasant. Lermite's phenomenon hurts. It's described as a sensation of electrical shock starting at the base of your neck and zipping down your back into your legs, into your feet. And it's triggered by neck flexion, meaning bending your head forward. So when someone bends their head forward, zip, they have electricity that shoots down into their feet. Now, this is the most classic presentation of Lermite's phenomenon. There's many different variants that have been described. They all have something in common. Somebody moves their neck, either forward or maybe to the side, and it's immediately triggering an electrical ephaptic discharge. Now, I've had patients in my clinic explain that they feel it just halfway down their back, or down their back into their arm, or down their back into their tush, but the point is, that they have a neck bending experience followed by an electrical shock. Yuck. Let's discuss what causes Lermite's phenomenon. I wanna first review a little bit about the spinal cord. And so I'll throw a spinal cord up here. And this is really the super highway that takes all the information from the brain down into the body and takes all the information from the body back up into the brain. And this superhighway is a bundle of tissue that's probably thinner than my two fingers are, are wide. And it's tethered as it's attached to the brain at the foramen magnum where it comes out of the skull base. So it's, it's tight at that spot. And as you follow the spinal cord down, there's all these nerves that come off. So you have all these spinal nerves that essentially tether the spinal cord uh, in the spinal canal. Now, when you flex your neck, when you bend your neck forward, or when you bend your neck to the side, you put tension on that spinal cord and you, you tug on it or stretch it a little bit. And in the setting of normal healthy spinal cord, that's not a problem. But if you've had damage to your spinal cord, specifically the posterior or the back side of the spinal cord, and you then stretch it, you then put tension on it, you can cause that area to fire uh, inappropriate electrical discharges. It'll send a fake message. And in essence, it'll tell your brain, I'm being shocked, even though in fact you're not being shocked. So the underpinnings of Lermite's phenomenon come from some type of previous damage or lesion to the back of the spinal cord and then that, that damaged spinal cord is put under tension. Why do we see Lermite's phenomenon so frequently in the setting of MS? Simply put, it's because you can have inflammatory damage to the spinal cord very commonly in the setting of MS. And so that can create a situation where you now have an inflammatory lesion in the back of the spinal cord which is at risk when you bend your neck for having an electrical discharge. Other conditions can also cause Lermite's phenomenon. It's not unique only to multiple sclerosis. In fact, anything that can damage that area of the spinal cord, that posterior aspect, whether that be infection or tumor, God forbid, or something else, could theoretically cause Lermite's. And one of the very best ways to clarify the underlying cause of Lermite's phenomenon is to take a picture. In other words, to obtain an MRI of the cervical spinal cord. Now let's turn our attention to how we treat Lermite's phenomenon. If this is a brand new multiple sclerosis symptom, Lermite's phenomenon may in fact uh, herald a new MS attack. And as with any new MS symptom, if you've experienced it for more than a day, I strongly encourage you to contact your MS provider and say, hey, I have new stuff, I might have an attack, I need to come in and talk to you. If it's determined, in fact, that this is a new MS attack, new inflammatory damage in the spinal cord causing this Lermite's phenomenon when you bend your neck, it may, in fact, be appropriate to use high-dose corticosteroids 
to treat the MS attack, to quell the inflammation, to reduce the inflammation at the spinal cord, and hopefully minimize or remove the Lermite's phenomenon. Sometimes MS symptoms stick around and they become chronic symptoms. I've had patients suffering from Lermite's phenomenon who learned essentially to avoid moving their neck and they would turn and block because they were fearful that if they moved, they would send an electrical shock down their body. And that's a horrible way to live and we don't want that to happen. We can use medicines to treat Lermite's phenomenon. In other videos on neuropathic pain syndromes, I've discussed the utility of using off-label anti-epileptic or seizure drugs. In, in review, I'll share that a common thread of seizure drugs is they stabilize excited cell membranes. And this helps uh, minimize or diminish seizures. Well, here we have a neurological problem where there's inappropriate firing of cell membranes in an area in the back of the spinal cord. And it makes sense that if you use a seizure medicine, you can quell that inflammation. And in doing so, you can minimize the, the neuropathic pain. And so we very commonly will use various types of anti-seizure medicines off-label to treat Lermite's phenomenon. There you have it, a quick didactic on a unique pain syndrome in multiple sclerosis, Lermite's phenomenon. In brief, it's caused by damage to the posterior or back of the spinal cord, typically up in the cervical spine. When that spinal cord is placed under tension or stretched by flexing the head forward or flexing it to the side, it triggers that area that's irritated to send off fake effaptic signals, telling the brain that you're being electrocuted or shocked when you're not. It's very commonly seen in the setting of MS, and fortunately, using off-label medicines, such as anti-seizure medicines, we can treat the condition. Thank you for spending time on the channel. If you haven't already, please take a moment and subscribe, and make sure you click that notifications button so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. If you've experienced Lermite's phenomenon, how do you describe it to someone else? What would be the words that you would use to help us understand what it felt like? Also, if you've successfully been treated for Lermite's phenomenon, please leave a comment below about what worked for you. Until next time, this is Aaron Boster. Thanks for learning about MS with me.